Skiing and snowboarding has evolved over the last few years. The demand for extreme terrain has increased dramatically. With new designs and technologies in equipment and the commercialization of extremism, the market has forced resorts to promote and develop their most difficult terrain. To make the cool grade, resorts are having to meet the demand of the extreme free ride crowd. Sunshine Village in Canada's Banff National Park is a world-class destination resort known for its spectacular vistas and classic backdrop. The family-oriented ski resort has taken the challenge and is developing more expert and extreme runs to meet the demand. New areas have been opened that were previously permanently closed or out of bounds. With the recent addition of Goat's Eye Mountain and the reopening of Delirium Dive, Sunshine Village now offers some of the steepest terrain and double black diamond runs in the Canadian Rockies. To promote the new terrain at Sunshine Village, I was asked to make a documentary of the Kokanee Free Ride Challenge. The event is being used to showcase these new runs. The Kokanee Free Ride Challenge is a unique event that fits skiers and snowboarders in a terrain interpretation expression session. To the lay person, this event would appear to be anything you can do, I can do dumber. The first day's events take place on the inbound ground of Goldside Mountain. It was chosen to weed out the skiers for the far more challenging terrain for the following day's event on Delirium Dive. The Gold Side venue has plenty of natural terrain obstacles to let contestants show their stuff with cliff drops and some steep narrow gullies. The snow conditions were difficult, limiting hucking, so the skiers need to show their skills as best they could in the existing conditions. Although this looks completely crazy at times, these riders have been scouting the routes they have chosen and probed their landings for big cliff jumps. For most, the run is completely pre-calculated. The routes they are choosing are not for everybody, but you don't have to huck your carcass off a cliff to ski delirium or goat side. There's plenty of wide open powder shoots similar to heliskiing, which are the runs most people would ski in these areas. These riders are redefining what is skiable. They are tackling big mountain faces, once considered invincible. Whether it's for thrills, fame, or profit, skiing and boarding has never been so versatile. These events demonstrate that freedom and versatility. As these types of events go, the Kokanee Freeride event had great cash prizes. With a large cash purse and other prizes, I was curious how this would affect the kind of risks competitors would be taking while competing in this event. Sunshine Inn is Banff's only ski-in, ski-out accommodation. Sunshine Village is located 8 kilometers west of Banff on Highway No. 1 and just 150 kilometers west of Calgary, about an hour and a half drive. It includes a giant outdoor hot tub, European sauna, jacuzzi suites, fine dining Eagle's Nest restaurant, a press ski entertainment in the Chimney Corner Lounge and Matt Trapper Saloon, games room, and a convenience store. The Calgary International Airport is served by numerous non-stop daily flights from major cities around the world. Regularly scheduled bus service is offered between the Calgary Airport and Banff. All the major car rental companies are also located at the Calgary Airport. Sunshine Village offers daily shuttle bus service from Banff hotels to and from the ski area. There are 3,100 acres of skiable terrain, 91 named runs spreading out over three mountains and two different provinces. The average annual snowfall at Sunshine Village is 33 feet. There are 3,100 acres of skiable terrain, one high-speed six-passenger gondola, three high-speed quad chairs, one triple chair, three double chairs, two T-bars, and two beginner toes. The season's length, mid-November to late May. Ever since Sunshine Village was established in 1928, the ski area has been famous for its abundant beginner and intermediate terrain. With the recent opening of Goat's Eye Mountain and Delirium Dive, Sunshine Village has added plenty of double black and backcountry terrain for the expert skier and boarder. And with three distinct mountain faces to choose from, skiers and boarders can follow the sun all day long. With so much natural snow, Sunshine Village is very proud to boast that they have absolutely no need for artificial man-made snow. The reopening of Delirium Dive at Sunshine Village has proven to be a tremendous addition for expert skiers and snowboarders. 
After being closed for almost 20 years by the Canadian Park Service due to the expense of avalanche control and rescue services, Sunshine Village assumed those responsibilities and the legendary delirium dive was reopened. Delirium closed originally by Parks and then when Parks got out of the avalanche control business, he had a permanent area closure on it. Up until a year ago, we didn't feel we, it was reasonable to open it in a traditional sense, mainly due to the terrain in there. Uh, there's slip and fall potential with some big cliff fans. So we felt that a shared responsibility idea. We do the act, active avalanche control in the area, but uh, it was up to the user to abide by our simple rules, carrying a transceiver, rescue shovel, seeing and riding with a partner. We felt we needed to uh, have some sort of check system for the requirements for having transceivers. It wasn't very realistic to have somebody up here all the time. So I contacted the Survival on the Snow uh, and gave them the concept for what we wanted and came up with this system. Uh, essentially, there's a, a transceiver built into that yellow box. Once it picks up the signal of the transceiver, it just releases the window. To promote the new terrain at Sunshine Village, we were asked to do a story on the Kopany Free Ride Challenge. The event is being used to showcase recently opened runs. I'd grown up skiing in Bath and was one of few who had skied this terrain prior to Parks Canada permanently closing this area for liability concerns. With Sunshine Village opening these new runs, I was eager to return. I knew this event would be unbelievable. To the lay person, this event would appear to be anything you can do, I can do dumber. It was a bold move by Sunshine to open with new expert terrain and delirium dive. And then showcasing it in an event like this, it's the perfect opportunity for them to show the world that they're not just caters to the intermediate skiers, that they've got the goods. Free riding has evolved from the image created by ski and snowboard movies. Free riding is judged on the same criteria as the highly successful and immensely popular free skiing competition. Free riding has opened up to include the top levels from snowboarding as well. The athletes will be judged first on their choice of line or degree of difficulty down the mountain. This is balanced by the control score, where any loss of control also entails a penalty. The final three judging categories are fluidity, technique, and aggressiveness. The winner is the rider who presents the most complete package of their skills and talents. <laughs> that guy could use some hockey gear. Goat's Eye Mountain gets its name from a natural formation in the rock, a hole in the mountain big enough to fly a plane through it. The eye is not accessible by the ski lift system. It is about a three or four hour tour and climb to reach the eye. Free ride and free skiing events have little in common with backcountry ski mountaineering. Often backcountry skiing is referred to as extreme skiing. But in the real world, most of these riders would not be taking the routes they are choosing if they were in the backcountry. Backcountry runs aren't judged and have no time limit. In the backcountry, you don't have the benefit of a small army of ski patrol or media and spectators to help you should you make a mistake. Hi, my name is Archie. Five yards. I'm skiing today. And how do you feel about that? Scared. A little terror is a good thing, though, isn't it? We're not out to kill people, we just have to have some fun. I don't find these fun. These are scary. Yeah, I was scared. I was just watching. So why do you keep doing it? Because I need to like, earn a living. There's a perception here of mental instability. But there's a great deal of forethought and uh, premeditation goes into a lot of it. It's 
people don't recognize when they just see someone come careening off a great big cliff. I'm not sure if they really realize the consequence of them falling off some of the cliffs in there and the, the kind of air that they're going to take and, and the, the rock that they could hit on the way down. This is the scariest part of this run right here. The staircase. You can make it down the stairs here. You're pretty much in. Give her a go. Get more done by doing nothing. Standing on the edge of delirium. Please let me know when you have your first competitor. Start. Whenever you see an event like the Coconut Free Ride Challenge, where we're taking high-end athletes and they're showcasing their skills in an extreme sport, certainly the potential is there for big wrecks. We certainly have some questions with this kind of event, with uh, the things that people are doing when we're responsible for the safety of the competitors. The fact that there are injuries in a sport doesn't invalidate a sport. You see crashes in Formula One and in downhill, and some of them very serious. It's pretty hard to be responsible for their safety with the sort, the, the type of thing that they're willing to try. My only problem with the event is some something with the scoring, how they're really forcing a lot of the people to go into really crazy lines. Uh, personally, I don't have a problem with them going into those areas where they did. Um, you know, that, that terrain is open to anybody any day that the area is open, uh, but it tends to be the higher end skier uh, competitor that wants to uh, go for the dust It's fun to get out there, see other skiers, compare yourself, and have some fun. There was a little bit of pushing the envelope in some of the terrain choices that were made. Uh, I think if some of the competitors had had a little bit more time to perhaps uh, scope out some of these lines, they might not have gone into these areas blindly and ended up with some of the uh, troubles that they did. I like the dude, man. That is good. She's got his own nice little line there. As the competitors become more experienced, the choice of lines change. You see them starting to do things that before they weren't aware were um, feasible. So you see them venturing out further and further afield into areas where it's interrupted by rocks and, and people look at it and go, 
how can you get through there? But they're able to knit together a, a mosaic of, of turns and lines and jumps and see a whole mountain. Hospital. For and for Jonathan. And there it is. Rag on in. It looks like he's committed to the line that Leanne decided not to take here. So let's see what Jonathan does. He's got it. It's all his. He's having a look at it. Put his brain in a jar and go for it. Two weeks ago, this was done. And it looks like it's going to be done again by Jonathan Moore. He's having a look. And there he goes. Nice big grab and runs it out. I think uh, the people who did well obeyed oh, the three rules of the team. Yeah, I'm pretty lucky that I didn't have myself. The first rule is you don't fall. I couldn't stop falling. The second rule is you don't think of falling. The third rule, obey the first two rules. <laughs> They're taking big wipeouts. They're cartwheeling, ragdolling, uh, through rock bands, and they're coming out with relatively minor injuries. Halfway through Andrew's fall, I think he might have been just falling for the camera. He was doing those back layouts. I know I've done a few myself. When you get going on an open slope like that, it's pretty easy to keep it going. I tried crossing my tips, a couple backflips there, and then I decided I could probably stop now if I wanted, but this is looking great. These guys are digging this, so I did three or four more. And then I got up and got Style points for backhand straight. Cheese on. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go inverted sometime or the other, I just figured it out the time. Well, I think you can wear the stormtroopers suit. That way you can bounce off rocks. <laughs> This is one of the first events where we have both snowboarders and skiers in the same event. I'm Chris Jackson, and I'm Grant Chow. I'm a skier, she's a boarder. We're here at the Delirium Dive. It's huge, it's gnarly, it's deep, it's big. Jump in. It was kind of interesting having a snowboard judge with us this time, and you know the terminology between snowboarding and skiing. There was, it's funny. It's very similar. A carcass is still a carcass, and when it flies off something that it shouldn't, it's still acting. It's really good that skier. Yeah, so good. Uh, John, don't you yeah. see how good it is that skier? I'm good buddy. But I mean, skier, uh, it's so cool that we've got a competition where we can all hang out together. I mean, it's all downhill sliding, right? I think we kick the snowboarder's asses. I don't know, I, I like watching the skiers, but the snowboarders is more fluid, right? Like when they have a good line, and that's gone into it, it's just like the soul feeling of coming down the mountain, I guess. I think a lot of folks were blown away 
when a snowboarder put in one of the sickest lines of the whole event. Kyle Wallachuk came across Bulls Gold doing the goat pass gnarly line, but he was capable. He stuck to his plan, nailed it perfectly. Despite everybody having their heart in their mouth, he came out the bottom and uh, straight to the winner's podium. Final event, venue three, they will have some very serious slopes. They'll be getting up to 60 to 70 degree slopes, a lot of cliff dropping, and a lot of very fast skiing. They will be doing this all in one big shot, and it will be fun to watch. You see people approaching the uh, free skiing, many different techniques. Everything from this extreme down climbing that gives everybody heart palpitations to the, uh, the ex downhillers who want to tear it up at Mach 16. You get a lot of people poking for uh, interesting lines, people getting creative, finding different areas that, that people aren't normally going into. Free skiing seems to be the cutting edge these days. It's sort of the evolution of um, so many other disciplines and coming together of so many other different disciplines. Anything you can do, I can do dumber. Is that what this is all about? Uh, you know, I think that some guys out dumb themselves up there and, and end up going beyond their abilities, but you know, some dumb guys do the same too. It's up to the judges then to decipher who did the best expression of their skills and talents and what was capable on the mountain on that given day. I don't know, I try not to incorporate head over heel roles into most of my runs. Uh, but there's a freedom there and that's the important thing. You see a lot of people pushing their limits. And um, it just makes the sport so much better. It's challenging. It's perfect. It's what it's going to be. You know? Some of those lines in there. Off oh, the big cliff five years ago. Couldn't be done. You know, people would have said it's unskiable. Then guys ski it. It would make it look easy. I mean, it's awesome. It kind of gives an, an avenue for people to be pushing the sport and, and getting really creative and, and going hard, going big. Awesome. Whether it's freestyle, whether it's downhill. Air's always been part and parcel of the serious skiing game. And so it always comes down to some hockey. Yeah, there's a little bit of hard trucking, but that's inevitable. The free skiers just tend to look for different variations that usually do involve dropping off some kind of precipice. You know, hopefully the best guys are on top in the end, and the not so best guys are all still alive. If you don't see air, you probably won't see a winning run. about having a good time with the bros, going out, seeing some different lines, a hundred for dollars. Huck for bucks? No, I don't think it's a huck for bucks. I'd much prefer to You know, the winning line today, you didn't have to use it. You know, you see some guy hucking his carcass off some monster cliff, and you go, what must be going through his mind? Sometimes it's pretty simple. This is cool. What did I get for second? I don't know what I've won yet. Yeah, the motivation behind a lot of these competitors may be to get their face out there, maybe attract some sponsorship. Took me, I'm hoping for a keg of beer. And uh, this is my buddy Jonathan Moore, who won. And he wants free beer too. Anyway. Who's well, riding? It ain't riding around. Well. Who's here? It's Jonathan Moore. Jonathan Moore! I didn't get to do the hairy line child did, but wasn't oh, quite enough snow left for me, so it's all right. What'd you take for first place? Yeah. Down payment on my snowmobile. This is what this is all this work? Yeah, my job. Yeah, I did yeah. It's living. <laughs> it is. Just scaring yourself and realizing that, you know, okay, I, I, I don't just want to throw it away in a straight line this hundred foot so I've got to think about what I'm doing. And if i got to do it right, I'm not going to hurt myself. So. You certainly do see a bit of Kodak courage coming into play. But the thing is, a lot of these skiers are into it for the aesthetic. Whether there's a contest or a camera, they're out there doing this stuff anyway. Touching yourself, challenging yourself, you know, and then some people do that differently than others. Is there a line where he's going? There isn't. Is it 
just in there. Oh, it's that Chandra area landing. Oh, I don't know. I scooped it all day, and like uh, I was here two weeks ago, and I knew I was doable. I just went for it, and I don't know. Ends up pretty good. I mean, talking here, and I'm taking stoked. as much as 80 feet that they can jump off the cliffs. They went right out on the edge and just free fell until they hit the snow. They hit the snow probably moving at 60 or 70 miles an hour and they have to pick up their turns. Remember, the judges are judging for, for how they ski, how smooth they are. So when they hit the snow, there's no falling or landing on their back. If they want to win this event, they have to land on their feet and they have to ski. Obviously, there was a shortage of planes when planes were out here. I think there's one competitor that entered, entered this contest not knowing that it's dangerous and there is a chance you're going to hurt yourself, you know? As the sport evolves, the bounce and see crashes and you're going to see some people get hurt. Some of the head last time, back to work. We just hope that uh, it's not serious as this education phase goes on. From what I gather, he did not intend to go off that cliff, so... Yeah, I thought it was a totally different spot on the mountain. I didn't really get enough time to assess it out. That's another thing you need to do to know exactly where you're going. Like I, I got lost. Uh, anytime you hear about someone going down, you catch your breath a little bit. And, and so, what right do you think you can find in the depth? Setting it up a little bit. No, it's natural. Oh, fine. There's a lot of people who are very lucky. Uh, we've seen this in competitions before. I, I don't really know is it the, that the skiers and boarders are that good that they know how to fall. All right, drop it in and just, on your feet, just hanging on to those rocks. Or are they just lucky? Josh, uh, with my ride up this morning, and he's uh, getting plans for the horseshoes and horses. He sat down and just woke him and I had he lost the ski and managed to stop. He's not stopped now. And as I was going down, I put my hand down and the wrist snapped. And I hit my knee and then I fell. So I'm going to find Ryan and one more Zero. Zero. Nothing. <laughs> Can you do more of that? Oh yeah, definitely. A little less, uh, a little less large of a hot though at the end, I'm hoping. <laughs> Had he died, I'm sure the media would be tearing him apart right now and on the events and everything else, but people die skiing all the time, it's dangerous. We know it's dangerous, we do because it's dangerous. Ah, uh, the uh, quite a show. Spectacular and horrendous falls. Luckily, the injuries were actually quite minor. Some of the tumbles were just a little bit more. But we got good, spectacular shows.